Josiah Willard Gibbs was a professor of mathematical physics at Yale University who gave many contributions to physics, chemistry, and mathematics. He's considered one of the founders of statistical mechanics and was known among his colleagues as someone who rarely made public pronouncements. One day, however, Gibbs surprised all of them in a faculty meeting about replacing mathematics requirements for students with foreign language courses. Gibbs stood up and firmly pronounced, Gentlemen, mathematics is a language. 200 years prior to that, Galileo Galilei published an article in which he said, The universe cannot be read until we have learned the language and become familiar with the characters in which it is written. It is written in mathematical language. Today we will learn how to speak in mathematical language. For that, let's begin with a challenge. What does the following mathematical phrase mean? Please pause the video and try to understand it. By the end of this video, you will learn each of these symbols and how to interpret this sentence in mathematical language. Let's get started. Let's start with the definition of perpendicular, which can be easily understood in a geometrical way. Say we have a triangle ABC. Then it is easy to see intuitively that the sides AC and AB are perpendicular to each other. In other words, a 90 degrees angle is formed between them, parallel. Now, having a rectangle ABC, the sides AC and BD are clearly parallel to each other. Equivalent. We can construct similar triangles ABC, GBE, and HBF such that the sides CE, EF, and FB are congruent or equivalent. Column equal means equality by definition. Next, we have the symbol of proportional. And we see that in this example, the triangles ACB, GEB, and HFB are all proportional to each other. We also notice that the side CB is three times longer than the side CE implying that the sides CB and CE are proportional to each other, since the length of one divided by the other results in an integer number. Let's talk about two symbols now, the floor and the ceiling brackets. As the name suggests, the floor brackets is a function that approximates any real number by the integer right before it in the real line. Thus, the floor brackets applied to pi results in 3. Analogously, the ceiling brackets approximates any real number by the integer right after it in the real line. Hence, the ceiling brackets of pi is 4, and f of x is the notation of the function f of the variable x. Capital pi represents products. For example, pi from n equals 1 to n equals 5 of n over n plus 1 is the multiplication 1 over 1 plus 1 times 2 over 2 plus 1 times and so on until 5 over 5 plus 1. Working out all the math here, this particular example results in 5 factorial over 6 factorial, which is just 1 over 6. Similarly, the capital sigma represents a sum. For example, sigma from n equals 1 to n equals 5 of n over n plus 1 equals 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 2 over 2 plus 1 plus and so on until 5 over 5 plus 1, which equals 71 over 20 in this example. Next, braces is used to denote a set. Parenthesis means priority in mathematics and column in this context means such that. And it turns out to be extremely useful in mathematical expressions. This type of z means integer numbers, i.e. the numbers 0, 1, 2, etc., together with their reflection in the negative line, as we see here below. n stands for the natural numbers, which is the set containing only the positive elements in the integers, implying also that 0 is not included. The rationals are denoted with this type of q, and it is the set containing all numbers that can be written as a ration of integers. Despite the fact that not all numbers can be represented as a fraction of integers, the rationals are dense, which means that between any two rationals there is always another rational in the real line, as illustrated by the black strokes in the drawing below. The real numbers are represented by this r, and it can be informally defined as all possible numbers in this line. The backslash is the notation for exclusion, or without. Therefore, z backslash n is the set of negative integers with zero included in it. For the same reason, R backslash Q is the set of real numbers without the rationals, also called the set of irrational numbers. Weirdly, it is also dense in the real line, but we will not enter in details here about uh, why and how. Examples of irrational numbers are the squared root of 2, of 3, of 4.2, etc., positive or negative, pi, the Euler's number e, etc. More generally, the irrationals are all real numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction of integers. This wedge symbol means the word and. This V symbol means the word OR, and in some contexts, the vertical bar means that the number in the left divides the number in the right. For example, 3 divides 9, 2 divides 12, and negative 7 divides 49. The general rule is that if we have two integers, n and m, then n divides m, 
if m divided by n results in an integer number as well. Counterexamples are 8 does not divide 10, 2 does not divide 1, and 7 does not divide 3. Next, we see that this is the symbol of negation, and this is the symbol of implies. Hence, the fact that m divided by n is an integer implies that n divides m. Similarly, if n does not divide m, then it implies the negation of the fact that m divided by n is an integer. In other words, it implies that it is false that m divided by n is an integer. This is the symbol of if and only if, and can be interpreted as the imply symbol but in both directions. The next symbol means contradiction. As an example, the affirmation that 3 divides 4 implies that 4 over 3 is an integer number, which is not true, hence we got to a contradiction. The following three symbols represent exist, does not exist, and exist a unique, respectively. Let's see the last one in action. There exists a unique natural number n such that n divides m for all natural numbers m if and only if n equals 1. In fact, the only positive integer that divides all other integers is 1. The next symbol is the third style, which when written between two mathematical expressions denotes from something I know something else. The following two symbols mean because or since and therefore. Let us see an example of the use of turnstile. From n divides m, I know that m divided by n is an integer. Another example is simply that I know that 2 divides 4. The last group of symbols is the following. As I already used the symbol, this upside down a denotes for all. dy over dx is the notation of the derivative of y with respect to x. Big U means union, and the upside down big U means intersection. The empty set has these two representations. And now, some popular Greek letters in use in mathematics. Lambda, nu, mu, omega, and delta, which can represent any variable depending on the context. The disjoint union is written as this squared u. An example is the disjoint union of the irrationals with the rationals, which results in all real numbers, since the intersection between irrationals and rationals is empty. But the natural numbers disjointly united with the integers is a contradiction because it is false the fact that the intersection between the natural numbers and the integers is empty. In other words, there exist numbers that are simultaneously part of the naturals and of the integers, and thus I cannot perform their disjoint union. And the last one is this square that is put in the end of a mathematical proof to denote QED, or in Latin, quod erat demonstradum, or in English, as was to be shown. And that's it. Going back now to the challenge we started with. We read it in the following way. From the fact that there exists a unique lambda, defined as a function of nu, such that the derivative of lambda with respect to nu is equivalent to x index 0, which is defined as lambda of 0, which is defined as an element of the set composed of the integers without 0, intersected with the set of all elements delta, belonging to the integers, such that delta is natural and it divides omega, for all omegas belonging to the integers. All of it for all nu's belonging to the real numbers. From this fact, I know that mu is equivalent to x index 0, or mu is equivalent to lambda of 0, since mu times nu plus lambda of 0 equals lambda. In order to interpret it, let's start by understanding which set this is. This set is the intersection of these two other sets. The first is the integers without 0. The second is the set formed by all integers delta, such that delta is natural. In other words, only the positive integers. And omega divided by delta is an integer for all integers omega. Hence, delta must be 1, because this is the only natural number that divides all integers. This implies that the intersection of these two sets is nothing but the set containing only one element, namely 1. And thus, our original expression can be simplified as the following. However, if lambda of 0 belongs to a set containing only one element, then lambda of 0 equals this element, namely 1. Equivalently, we have. This reads as, from the fact that there exists a unique lambda depending on nu, such that the derivative of lambda with respect to nu is 1 for every nu real, I conclude that nu is 1, since lambda of nu equals mu nu plus 1. Of course, this huge mathematical phrase can be simplified even more. If the derivative of lambda with respect to nu equals 1 for a function lambda of nu, then this function is nu plus 1. Its graph is drawn here. It is a straight line passing through the point 1 in the lambda axis with slope that makes an angle of 45 degrees with respect to both axes. Conclusion. This kind of expression trains you to be comfortable with the mathematical language. 
Moreover, this example shows the power of the mathematical language to make long expressions in English language much more concise. And that is the construction that I would like to share today. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that I can make more videos. Thanks.